this special edition of Talk Time. My guest today is a very, very proactive political leader from Nagaland, Mr. Temjan Imna Along, the Minister for Higher and Technical Education. He is also the president of the state unit of the BJP in Nagaland, which is a coalition partner of the People's Democratic Alliance government led by Chief Minister Nephew Rio. Mr. Temjan Imna Along, welcome to my show. Thank you very much, Osbir. Uh, Temjan, you know, the world is battling COVID. The entire country is battling COVID. And we can see in the last three to four months, you have been extremely proactive in helping out in the fight against COVID in Nagaland. Uh, sometimes we see that it is you go beyond your call of duty. Uh, is it always like this for you? Is, is this the real Tamjan Imna along? Osbir, I put that for the people to judge and then to know. But as for me, yeah. this battle is not a battle for a single person alone or just for the medical department or for those that are in the frontline workers. COVID has completely changed the way the people of this world have to think. It is a collective battle. Each and every individual is a frontline worker. And if we do not go way out consistently fighting against the pandemic, in whichever means it may be, because the pandemic is not only about the infection, but also about the way of life. It is also about our priorities. Right. And it is also about assuring the people that we can win over this tide through collective efforts. And that is the reason I think not only me, but many leaders and many people who are not maybe not in social media or not in the limelight right. are also going way out and doing it. So I'm just part and parcel of that you know, system that have to go and do it. Now, you see, uh, what has the COVID pandemic taught you personally and as a people's representative, as a political leader, as the president of an important political party in Nagaland, which is also running the government along with the NDPP? Personally, COVID-19 pandemic has taught me how unempowered we all are, how right. not ready we all are. This pandemic has overwhelmed not only me, but also the whole world and my state in particular, Nagaland. But it has taught us to have robust infrastructure. It has taught me personally that we need to be prepared for any kind of a situation. And the most important thing that has taught me personally is that, that we need to be that agent where the minds of the people can be strong, developed, to encounter and then to be able to fight any such kind of pandemic, not only in terms of sicknesses and viruses, right. but also castratop or in the days to come. Now, you see, the COVID crisis has brought to light the inadequate health infrastructure in Nagaland. Uh, why Nagaland? You know, let's talk about the Northeast as a whole. But since you are representing Nagaland, let's focus on Nagaland. The COVID crisis has brought to light, you know, the poor, if I may use the word, infrastructure or health infrastructure. Do you first of all admit that healthcare infrastructure is poor? And what can you do in the days ahead to improve this? I do admit that the health infrastructure in Nagaland was quite poor. One of the main reasons is also because of the various issues that we have been facing through since our statehood. And also, not that we want to blame anybody, but also the ease with which we had taken the importance of healthcare, which we had neglected for too long. And you know our tribal mindsets. Yeah. So that is one of the main reasons. But in the days to come, we have to be prepared. And I'm very sure that the Honorable Chief Minister, 
our nephew Rio and his leadership and the PDA government are robustly and very fastly acting on it and we are trying our best to build those infrastructures that are needed immediately and making long-term plans so that the people of Nagaland, however remote they may be living in, wherever they may be, have availability of at least a robust healthcare system where they can be assured of proper healthcare. Now you see, uh, Mr. Temchen, you know, coming to your department, uh, that is the Department of Higher and Technical Education, in the last couple of days, you have made a very significant statement. You have tried to assure uh, the very, very anxious student community in Nagaland that they need not worry that the state government is going to take care of their scholarships. Uh, so do you really mean it? Would you like to elaborate a little bit? Absolutely. The PDA government is completely uh, convinced that the students are the future of not only the state, but also the nation. Absolutely. And we have a population of approximately 21, 22 lakhs, where the youngsters form almost 70 percent of the population. And every year, at least 30 to 40,000 students passed out from their HSLC and HSSLC. Now, we come from an economy that is aggregate. And the people of Nagaland are mostly uh, from the farming sector of people or from the service sector. Right. So this young man and woman who come out of their class 10 and 12, especially, are having dreams, visions, and goals in their life. And the little thing that we can do for them is to provide them the scholarships which the government of India is helping them with the post-metric scholarships from the tribal ministry. And also the state merit and research scholarship, which is 100% funded by the state government. And also the NEC stipend and book grant, which is funded by the Ministry of Donair. Right. And in there, we need to make sure that no student who is uh, eligible is deprived of that effort, of that scholarship, because it means a lot for that student. Right. And every student is also you know, asked to use it judiciously so that they may pay their fees or buy some books or you know, help them make their academics in them strong. So that is our effort. Now you see, while making, while making your announcement about scholarship, you also made a very, very unprecedented and extremely significant appeal on that occasion. You said you appeal to the Naga underground groups not to tax your department, not to come to your department asking for any funding. Uh, you, you said that you know this is a department uh, which is catering to the interest of the youths, the Naga students. So please exempt our department. Uh, what was the need to make this statement? See, we may understand that Nagaland is facing this political insurgency problem since decades now. And we know this has been into practice and going on, you know, because of maybe their needs also to sustain the organization and so on. But it is high time that we come to understand the fact that while trying to you know, meet their needs, they should not be a barrier to the future of the people of Nagaland. Yeah. And to be able to do that is you know, not disturbing in any way the departments of this education sector, especially, whether it may be school education, higher education, or technical education. Why? Because if the student community who have to impose their faith on the government of the day and on their leaders, then we have to make sure that corruption is blotted out. And if corruption has to be blotted out, then we have to see the delivery of the system to the needy people in its foremost and best way. No. So when, 
when we give them money or if we give them money out of our departments, then how the hell will we be able to justify that? And how will we be able to bring uh, justice to the needy people when there are nine, ten groups coming and asking money or coming and asking for this need or that need? And it becomes a disturbing factor for the department. It becomes a disturbing factor for the government of the day and also for the minister in charge and the officers in the department and for even though we may that ignore means, it that for means, the students. That means, Mr. Mr. Tamjian, you must have made this appeal after careful deliberations, isn't it? Because none of your predecessors in the past have decided to make this kind of an appeal. Rather, I would say, uh, you know, if I'm not incorrect, no political leader has really made such a clear-cut appeal. Please don't disturb our department. We are taking care of the future of Nagaland and the future of the nation. No, I believe that this political insurgency or the workers, the political national workers they call, is also fighting and speaking on the future of a robust Nagaland. And so even though we may be, uh, you know, yards apart, we, the government of the day also, is working for the present people of Nagaland and the future of our state. And so I leave it to the wisdom of those that have not appealed. But I dare to say that because it really matters a lot. It really, really matters a lot. And I pray that they would understand the humility and the wisdom with which I have appealed to them that kindly don't disturb our departments. Have you got any response? Because it has already been three to four days, maybe five days since you made that appeal. Have you, have you got any response from any of the political, uh, Naga national political groups? I am sure they are very angry with me, but they will not respond to me uh, in such a manner because it is a very sensitive subject. And I know they understand why I am appealing also. So, so you, you, you have full faith that they will eventually understand the logic behind your appeal and they should also work in the greater interest of the Naga society? Absolutely. And if they don't understand also, I can do nothing about it, Wasbir. Okay, I mean, you see, what is the difference? Because a lot of people will now say that, okay, a very senior and dynamic minister has made this appeal. This is almost like a confirmation of what the governor has been saying, that there has been a lot of extortions going on in Nagaland and so on. Of course, uh, uh, he has used the word armed gangs, which a lot of people are not, not accepting. That terminology. terminology has been rejected by almost several groups in Nagaland. But how would you look at the governor's letter to the chief minister where he has talked about rampant extortion going on in Nagaland? See, Wasbir, everyone knows how the people of Nagaland have been facing and how the people of Nagaland have been going through all these problems. That is why we have appealed again and again to every uh, partaker of this future of Nagaland, that solution is the need of the hour. Right. And solution is what we need. Whether we call them extortion or whether we call them that they are also as an organization taking care of their needs or so on and so forth, that is, you know, something which I would like to avoid to say yeah. on the screen today with you. Yeah. But solution is the need of the hour for the people of Nagaland. And it has been high time that this has to come to the forefront, predeceasing every other efforts, because that is the inner cry of the people of Nagaland and the Nagas, wherever they may be, in particular. All right, on that note, we go for a short break, but don't go away. I'll come right back. I'm in conversation with Nagaland Minister for Higher and Technical Education and the State BJP President, Mr. Temjen Imna Alom. Welcome back. I am in conversation.
session with Mr. Temjan Imna Along, the Minister for Higher and Technical Education in Nagaland, and also the state BJP president. Now you see, apart from being a minister, you also hold a very responsible position because you are also the president of the BJP, and you know, BJP is the ruling party in the country. Question is. After the final talks, what were made to believe that 31st October 2019, that is last year, everything was supposed to have been sorted out, only the signatures were remaining. Uh, what has happened in the meantime, because COVID has come into effect only around March. So why this delay according to you and what will are you going to apprise your party leadership at the center? Was well, you see, I certainly and absolutely believe in the sincerity of the our Honorable Prime Minister, our Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, because it is unprecedented. Since 1997, talks have been going on, but it is only during his time where the framework agreement has been signed, where hand in hand he walked down together with our leaders of the uh, underground groups and have come through a fast-track process, understanding the unique identity of the people of Nagaland and the Nagas in particular. So that is something that all the people are looking up to, even though the common people may not know, you know, what actually is going on or what talks have been talked or what are the points they are talking on. But the belief yeah. on the Honorable Prime Minister has been immense, and that is why. Even in the PDA government here, the Joint Legislators Forum, which has been initiated under the uh, Honorable Chief Minister and the Honorable yeah. Speaker, has come cutting across party lines to build and to be able to facilitate this Naga solution in whichever manner it can be. So COVID pandemic-19, like I said, is not only about the virus, but it has affected the very system of our thought process, of our works, the way we deliver, the way we think, right. the way we have to work. Right. And I think one of the greatest effects of COVID-19 is it has affected the process that the Naga political issues are going on also. And I'm sure as we overcome this COVID-19 pandemic, we will be able to you know, go ahead with the uh, final solution, which has to be inked very soon. We look forward to that and to the leadership of Delhi and to the leaders who are doing the talks. We there, believe that this will come. Right. But the governor's letter uh, to the chief minister that has now come to the public domain almost uh, very quickly after it was sent. My question is, uh, Mr. Tamjan, uh, the question is, do you think there is a trust deficit between the governor and the state government? Governor is also the interlocutor. Do you think this is going to you know, be an obstacle in any way? What is your assessment? No, see, just my personal assessment and opinion, as you're asking me, was yeah. big, is that it is, I think, bridging the communication gap. It's not about any communication gap. The governor has, the honorable governor has written to the honorable uh, chief minister, and which means to the cabinet, uh, which are the representatives of the people, on certain issues which are pertinent in Nagaland, which is going on today or from his perspective, what he has said. And the uh, cabinet has duly uh, gone back to him and exchanged yeah. the viewpoints that are going on here. And it is, you know, a very healthy uh, conversation, a very healthy way of communication where the gaps are being breached and certain issues of his the governor's concern are also the concerns of the state of Nagaland. So I think it is more about bridging the gaps and not about any issues which the opposition or any other people are trying to make it out to be. Now, you see, you, you talked about the opposition. Uh, on one of my shows, the opposition, Naga People's Front in Nagaland has demanded the resignation of the Rio government, uh, saying that there is no law and order in the state, then they agree with what the governor had said, and they are demanding resignation. Uh, my dear Wasbir, opposition is actually robustly doing their job, and that <laughs> is so welcome. I can only say that. They were in ruling just two years and three months ago, 
And that is where all these issues have actually come up very robustly. And the present government of the day, if you look at the statistics, have been doing quite well. I can only say that, have been doing quite well. The PDA government is united. The NDPP party and the BJP party is a pre-poll alliance. And we are looking forward to a great uh, time ahead. Another two years, eight months, and a few days are left. We pray that the solution will be, uh, you know, placed before the people, and we pray that these things would be the most eminent things that we all look forward in the days to come. And the opposition sp saying here and there and those things. I also saw that interview where the NPF leader had spoken, and I really, you know, I feel that they are doing their job rightly, and that is what they need to do. Okay, but but you know it is a very peculiar kind of a situation because BJP is part of the government in Nagaland, and the Naga People's Front, which is the opposition party in Nagaland, is the ruling party, uh, part of the coalition with the BJP in Manipur. So how are you going to balance these two facts? Because uh, you know a lot of people are saying that okay. Uh, the BJP might bring the NPF into its fold so that it can stabilize and solidify the situation in Manipur. A lot of people are speculating on those lines. See, Osbir, one thing we have to know very well is that the Bharatiya Janata Party is a national party. We are an ideological party where nation comes first, party, and then the individual. Speculations can be anything in the market. Especially in Nagaland, there are a lot of rumors. And also in the Northeast, we are good in propagating propagandas and rumors. But as far as the BJP party in Nagaland is concerned, we are committed to the PDI alliance, which was justified before the elections by our central leaders, by our uh, headquarters. And that is where we will tread our line. We will not misinterpret anything or do anything or go anywhere until and unless, until and unless our leaders say so. And that is how the BJP party functions and works. So, so as part of the PDA government, as a minister, there is now a lot of talk about governance in Nagaland. People talk about infrastructure. We mentioned you were, you were, you were uh, you know, frank enough to admit that health infrastructure was not good, uh, is not good. But the question is, what about road infrastructure? As a young Naga political leader, Mr. Temjen, and someone who is so passionate about your own people across the state, uh, you must be absolutely disturbed when you see the condition of the roads across the state. I'm not blaming anybody, but why does, should it take more than 70 years after independence to have a good road connecting capital Kohima with the commercial hub Dimapur? Why should it take five hours to, to cover a distance of 100 kilometers. No, Wasbir, you see, one thing, Nagaland is a small state, but a state that is completely a state of villages. Kohima and Dimapur are just, you know, bigger towns that have come to emerge as cities today. But Nagaland is a state that is very independent in its own system of functioning in its villages itself. A village may be 100 uh, households only or 500,000, but each village is very important as a tribal. Now, let me tell you about the road infrastructure. Why? Everyone needs road. Yeah. The population is not in ratio to the needs that we have. The other part is the problem that we have faced through politically, yeah. insurgently throughout the decades. The other part is we were neglected during the UPA government. We were terribly neglected. It is unprecedented that only during the BJP-led NDA government under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji, we have got 17 national highways. Never before have we got it. And that is the reason we were neglected for too long. But now, as you see, was beer, even Dimapur to Kohima Highway, four-lane highway, is on fast-track movement. Yes, we have got soil conditions and landslide problems and those issues, where six months of the year we are almost raining incessantly. 
But at the same time, the road infrastructure is improving completely. In these two years and three months of the PDA government in Nagaland, it has been able to deliver unto its people. You come up to Kohima, or you go up to Mogokchong or Dimapur roads now, it has drastically improved. And then the quality of the roads is very good. I would put it that way. Right. So I think we can look forward to better roads in the days to come. Uh, not only better roads, my final question to you, Mr. Temjan, in the long, how do you see the days ahead for Nagaland? You have absolutely ruled out uh, that there is going to be any change in the political equations. You are comfortable with the NDPP-BJP alliance. Uh, then you are saying that NPF has done its job as an opposition party. You are not going to link up Nagaland with Manipur. How do you see the days ahead? My final question to you. It is in the days ahead for Nagaland, like any other political state in the Northeast or in this country. We look forward for a robust healthcare system. We look forward to a robust road infrastructure. And we look forward to a robust delivery of governance to the most unempowered people, wherever they may be right. in the economous part of Nagaland. And that is the endeavor where I stand also personally, and the PDA government led by the Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nefurio and Deputy Chief Minister Sri Waipaton, and the whole PDA is standing on that. It is unprecedented that in two years, three months, we could come thus far, in spite of so many issues coming one after the other. And we are there to fight the battle, and we are not going to shy away from delivering governance to the people. So in the near future, we look forward for a robust Nagaland that will be at the forefront of the states of this nation. Thank you very much, Wasbir. Absolutely, Temjan Imna Along. Thank you very much uh, for being so candid, so forthcoming with your thoughts. We need leaders who have such kind of clear-cut thoughts. Yes, uh, your thoughts will not be accepted by each and everybody. It should not be, of course, like in a democracy, but you have articulated your thoughts very, very clearly, and that clarity is needed from political leaders in the Northeast. Thank you very much, indeed, for speaking to me on Talk Time. Thank you very much, Wasbir. Good day.